video of this too as they approached yes. the common truck. Yes. Yeah. And then a, a split second after that, you got the major collision. Hmm. And NASA, uh, right after that happened, uh, I, I can't quote the, the guy uh, precisely, but it's something like, "Oh, we're we're totally surprised. This is something totally unexpected." <laughs> well, of course. Wall is standing there with his arms folded, with a big smile on his face, yeah. saying, "Not by me, it wasn't unexpected. <laughs> exactly what plasma cosmology would have predicted." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fascinating. And later, when the, when uh, some uh, some news organization began to uh, talk about Wall's prediction, mm -hmm. the uh, the standard astronomer said, "Oh, that's balderdash. <laughs> that's that's uh, complete cobblers. That's balderdash." Uh, <laughs> No, no, uh, no charge is possible on a comet. Why, why do you think there is such? Because it seems to be at least a, a fierce uh, kind of resistance to this theory. Why, why do you think that is? I don't know. Um, the only thing I can think of is a combination of things, possibly. Uh, I mean, I don't for, for a moment. I don't think it's any. You know, I'm not a conspiracy theorist or anything <laughs> like that. I think it's. it's more inertia than anything else. Mm. Um, when when you get a PhD, uh, it, it, you work for a fellow who uh, is your your advisor, your boss, and you, you, he sets you on your research path, and you do the best you can, and you get if you're if you're lucky and you work hard and you're reasonably intelligent, you get your PhD too. Mm. And it's very difficult to turn around and then look at that fellow who has helped you so so much and say to him. I think you're wrong. I think I think you should uh, think about this other stuff, this electrical business. Mm. And I think it's science has been sort of on a in a rut, in a groove. Yeah. And uh, also, it it, it 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 also depends on your funding will depend on your being well liked in, in, <laughs> in your in your supporting the the ongoing paradigm. Yeah, sure. If you sound like a quote kook unquote. <laughs> Yeah. To, uh, if, if you raise uh, hackles and say, "Gee, I don't think the Big Bang ever happened," <laughs> uh, you're not going to get a job in an astronomy department. Yeah, so. yeah. So, hmm. so it's no, yeah, there's no con conscious uh, yeah, conspiracy in the, in that sense. It's it's more like the the, the current paradigm is such as it, as it is. So. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, what do you think? What, what's, what, what does it, go, what does it have to take to, to, you know, shift the paradigm? <laughs> I, I don't know. All I can think of, and I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but if, <laughs> if more people will write books like mine, that is to say, if we get the word out that there is uh, a reasonable, really scientific. Um, group of people, mm. uh, that is to say, mainly electrical engineers, plasma physicists like Tony Peratt, Dr. Tony Peratt, and, and his, his, uh, his group there at Los Alamos, and, and, and others, uh, oh, Tim Eastman, uh, there's, uh, the, there's Jarrett Verschur, who's a radio astronomer, who's making all sorts of measurements that really, con I, I hesitate to say contradict, but certainly challenge the Big Bang theory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, If, an, if enough of that word gets spread around to graduate students in astronomy, yeah. uh, perhaps they can keep their mouth shut long enough to get their degree. <laughs> and then later, when they've achieved a certain tenure or uh, stability in their positions, they can yeah. begin to introduce some of these new ideas. But mm -hmm. the way it is right now is the standard cosmology, the Big Bang Theory, the uh, The redshift equals uh, distance and, uh, and, and recessional velocity. Mm -hmm. That group has complete, utter control over all the funding agencies in the world, mm -hmm. just about. Uh -huh. And uh, that, that's, that's a terrible thing to say, and it sounds like this. It sounds like if somebody listens to me, they'll say, gee, that guy is a kook. Well, <laughs> well try it. Yeah. That, it yeah. That's the truth. Yeah. The, the, the head of NASA has been quoted just quote it and, and completely openly admits NASA simply will not fund any research that is antithetical to the Big Bang. End of story. <laughs> well, that's that's not science. That's not open-mindedness. That's not looking for new truth. Yeah. That's, that's preserving 
our funding stream. <laughs> exactly. And that's unfortunately what the, the battle is being fought. And that's why <laughs> I say there are really sciences in collision here. <laughs> Yeah, t yeah, I totally hear what, you, what you're saying, and um, you know, time mo moves so fast here, Donald. But do you feel like uh, do, do you want to continue with us? Do you have time? Uh, uh, sure. Uh, there, a couple of things that we, we might get into are, is the work of uh, Halt and Arp and Redshift. I know I just mentioned that. Mm, yeah, sure. I mean, we can get to stuff like the the black holes and uh, the, the Redshift <laughs> okay, and the sure. quasars. I and haven't given up yet, so uh, sure. <laughs> Yeah, so, but uh, we still have a few minutes here in the, in the first segment, so why don't you uh, tell us more about the book and, and kind of uh, uh, so, some, some, some of the stuff that you go into more in, in the book and, of course, how, how uh, we can get it and so forth. Uh, uh, sorry, what, say your question again. Uh, uh, tell us more, uh, you know, a little bit more about the book and, and what kind of um, topics you go into. I beyond don't know. pages or so. Mm -hmm. um, if, if, if anybody really wants to see that uh, and then take a look at what's in there, uh, the, the preface, the contents, and actually chapter one are all available on the web at that site that you mentioned. That's the electric-cosmos.org. Dot org, yeah, yeah. And uh, if they go in there and look down on the left-hand side of the, I guess you have to click on the on the title, The Electric Sky, and then mm -hmm. you you'll get a screen that says, would you like to look, see about the author, or would you like to look at the preface? And, mm -hmm. and they, they, they can get a feeling for it. But the, 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 the contents, the chapters, are all listed in there. Ah, oh, excellent. And, um, and, and can, can, can people buy the book uh, off, off your site, or where will it be uh, available? Well, yeah, they, it, there, at the bottom it says availability, and uh, that will take you to the publisher. Mm. And that's, that's Micamar Publishing in Portland, Oregon, and purchase it through them. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, so uh, we're just about out of time in this segment here, but we will uh, continue now with uh, with Donald. And uh, again, check out his site, uh, electric-cosmos.org. And uh, we will take a short break, and we will be right back. This is Red Eyes. We are going to continue our discussion with Donald in our subscriber section and uh, talk about a lot of stuff that we didn't get to in this first segment. So if you are a subscriber, access our archives and uh, tune in. If you're not a subscriber, do consider signing up with us. We do need your help and support to keep going and to expand on all things we do here. We have very modest fees, 33 euros for uh, one whole year and 17 euros for six months. Uh, that's about 12 cents a day if we speak in U.S. dollars. So click on that sign up or subscribe button and uh, read more. Thank you all for listening to the show and thanks to Fredrik Palmgren behind the controls. We will be back this Sunday with Mitch Batros from Earth Changes TV. So stay tuned. This is Henrik Palmgren. Take care and we will talk soon.